Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at both literally and figuratively making any photo cooler using this really neat color wash effect here in Photoshop. Gotta say, if you enjoy the tutorial, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss any Photoshop, photography, or other related tutorials past, present, or future. Uh, let's jump right into this tutorial and check this thing out. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Now, the first thing we're going to do is, well, have some kind of photo. This can be anything. I just have this portrait uh, shot, uh, or portrait shot in a studio, I should say. Uh, and this type of photo works particularly well, but this effect really works for anything. The first thing we're going to do is come over here and set our foreground color. I'm going to click on my foreground, and I'm going to set it to 0076 uh, EC. Now, this is just a light blue color I like. Again, you can use any color you like, but I'm just giving you all the specifics if you're following along. So go ahead and grab that color. Then we're going to add a gradient fill layer. So we're going to go layer, new fill layer and choose gradients and just hit OK when it asks you for a name. Now I'm getting this kind of crazy blue to transparent gradient because I've selected the gradient stripe here and I have chosen this guy right here the color or well, really it's foreground to transparent gradient and that's going to allow me to take obviously my foreground color and just fade it out to nothing. Now I want to set the angle here to zero because I actually want the blue to come over here from the left hand side and a cool trick you can do with the gradient fill layer is you can actually click and drag the gradient so it's like eh, let's have the blue come to about right there and then I'm going to hit OK. Now what I'm going to do is simply set this layer to the blend mode of soft light and then I'm going to hit command or control J and I'm going to set this new layer to lighten and what I'm going to do is just reduce the opacity I don't know we'll take it down to around 75 I think that's a that's a good look for us. Next we're going to come back we're going to select the foreground color and we're going to change the foreground color here to something a little bit more pink so let's go like C41 B65 that's a nice hot pink that looks good and we will go layer once more new fill layer gradient. Hit OK to bypass that new layer dialog box. You can see once again, Photoshop knows you probably just want foreground to transparent again, which in fact it's correct. We do want that. We're going to set the angle in this case to 180 degrees. That's going to bring the color in from the right hand side. And at this point, you can also push and pull and drag the gradient. I'm going to drag it until it covers about what looks right. And that, that's really general, I know, but you kind of know it when you see it. Once more, we'll set this layer to the blend mode of, you guessed it, soft light. And we're going to duplicate that layer again, Command or Control J. And we're going to set that to the blend mode lighten as well and just reduce the opacity also probably down I don't know we'll take it down a little further somewhere around 50 probably works for the pink next what we want to do to begin pulling more color and contrast out of this image is add a color balance adjustment layer that's this little adjustment layer here in our adjustments panel and I'm going to begin with my mid-tones I'm going to push it up to about plus Hey, about plus 20 for the reds. Uh, let's add some magenta here. So we'll go right around plus 20 with magenta as well. And then I want to push some blue into my mid-tones. I'm going to go about plus 25. These are all just, you know, relatively. As long as you're kind of in the ballpark, you'll, you'll be looking pretty good. Uh, let's actually, I'm going to go to highlights first. Uh, here in the highlights, I'm going to push some red into the highlights. A bit of red. I'll go like plus 30 or thereabouts. I'll slide a little magenta into the highlights, I think. And then we'll push some blue into the highlights as well. So about negative 10 and plus 15 for the magenta and blue. Uh, and then we'll go over to shadows and here in the shadows we're going to dump some cyan into the shadows so I'm going to go like negative 20 right on the dot that looks good and then we'll also push a little bit more magenta in there so about negative 15 and then uh, we'll push some blue into those shadows as well so right around plus 15 works for that so we can see before color balance and after it really is beginning this strong recolorization process now to add a more contrast and maybe even tone the color down a little bit, we're going to add this little color, or I'm sorry, not color mixer, channel mixer adjustment layer. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to tick on monochrome. So you can see it's going to convert it to a black and white. Don't worry, because what we're going to do is set it to the blend mode soft light, which will essentially turn this into a contrast layer. So you can see before and after we get this nice, strong contrast, really nice. Just wanted to pop out here for a second, take a quick break. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, you like this tutorial, consider supporting the channel. Pick up a copy of my Photoshop course all about how to retouch images. There'll be a link that appears right up there. You can use that and check it out. Uh, and your support, mm, greatly appreciated if you do choose to do that. If not, hey, lots of free tutorials here, and I wouldn't fault you for checking them out first. Uh, let's jump back into the tutorial. Next up, I think what I want to do is add a selective color adjustment layer. Let's continue tweaking these colors. Uh, from the colors, we're going to mess around with the whites, neutrals, blacks only. So let's go to the whites first. And uh, I think I want to push some red here into the white. 
uh, into the, the absolute lightest pixel. So we'll go like plus 25 for that. Um, now the opposite of magenta is green. So we're actually going to push a little drip of green into those highlights. Uh, and then the opposite of yellow is blue. So I'm going to pull back on the yellow to introduce a lot of blue. So about negative 40 on the yellow slider. I'm not going to touch the black slider. We're good there. We're going to go over to neutrals here. And neutrals, the opposite of cyan is red. So if we go negative, we'll go about negative 15 there. So about uh, on the cyan slider, negative 15% is going to work for us. Then we'll go plus uh, right around plus 15, I guess, for the magenta slider looks good. Um, and then yellow, let's see, should we add yellow? Should we remove yellow? I actually kind of think I like adding yellow uh, to the neutral. So let's go about plus 15 on that. I think it really makes the, the pink look very, very rich. Very cool. Uh, let's go over to the blacks now. And here we're going to add a little bit more uh, red to the very shadowy, just the very darkest of areas uh, here in our image. We'll bump a little magenta in there as well. You got to be careful in the shadows. You can really drastically start to change an image quickly uh, if you do too, too much and then we'll add a little blue to those very most shadowy areas uh, so about a negative negative 15 or so with the cyan slider uh, plus five and I guess around negative 10 on the yellow slider uh, but again you can see there's before there's after so we're just kind of tweaking the colors and at any point if that's too much you always have this nice little opacity slider you can just back it off a little bit if you think it needs that now this is an effect that really you should create it probably in studio with gels but obviously you know as we can see here sometimes you may look at a photo that was just shot sort of naturally and you realize you want to do all this crazy color and speaking of color we can intensify the color a little bit more if we feel we need it by selecting the bottom gradient color layer so that's the soft light gradients. Uh, that would be the blue and then here the pink and just hit command or control J to duplicate that soft light and you can see that's really going to intensify the effect uh, maybe a little bit too much and you can sort of start to see some banding in there so we would probably have to add some finishing noise to this I'm going to reduce the opacity of these layers way down so we get a little a little bit of intensity but nothing that's going to kind of blow the doors off this thing and the last but not least if we absolutely wanted to take this a little step further you can do a little bit more I got white as my foreground color so we'll create a little bit of a highlight here uh, let's once more, we can use the little uh, half white, half black circle and add a gradient fill layer this way as well. I'm going to add a gradient layer and black and white are my foreground background color because I had a mask selected. When you have a mask selected, you can see foreground and background color will be white. So I'm actually going to specifically click on the selective color icon. Now you can see, I see, I see my true colors literally. I'm going to hit the letter D. That's going to set black as the foreground color, white as background. So we're going to create a gradient uh, layer. This is going to make a black to transparent gradient. That's fine because we'll, we'll mess with the shadow first. Let's set our angle here to like 40, uh, not 45 degrees. What am I thinking? Let's go like 100 and I don't know, 115 degrees, something like that. And then I'm going to slide the black off this way. Maybe kind of something like that. Hit OK. And in this case, also, we will set this to the blend mode of soft light. So basically, it's just going to add some kind of shadowing down in that corner. And basically, we'll do the opposite and add a highlight up here to the top. So just flip your foreground and background colors in that little uh, double switch arrow. And once more, we will go down to that little half white, half black circle, gradient, uh, fill layer. And in this case, we'll go for like, uh, what did it be? Or not 135, what am I thinking? i go like negative 135. Nope, not negative 135. This is what I'm looking for over here. No, it's not. Down here, negative 35. Negative 35. There we go. I'm a professional, guys. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> not quite. Uh, all right, here we go. We're just going to slide this over. Um, and until kind of it looks about right, maybe right around there looks cool. We'll hit OK. And there's a couple things we can do here. Of course, we can just set this to soft light, and that's easy enough, but it's kind of the boring way to go. Let's let's spice things up a little bit here with the highlight. Double click on the gradient fill layer to open up layer styles, and come down here and t uh, check this off, transparency shapes layer, and then we're going to set this to the blend mode of linear dodge add, and it's going to give us this really strong kind of like explosion of a, a highlight uh, area too much. So we'll take, you can really take opacity or fill opacity. I'm going to roll with the fill opacity here and just tone it back. I'm going to tone it back, I don't know, 40, and that looks good probably. So we can see there's without the highlight, there it is with the highlight. And all things considered, if we scroll back down and just hold down our alter option key and hit the eyeball for the background layer, there was the image we began with. And here is what we've got now that we've applied this very strong, uh, very cool, again, literally and figuratively, cool color effect to your photo. Just a series of gradients and colors build it up. Again, you can use any color you want. And in an ideal world, yeah, you will probably shoot this with some colored gels and, you know, make sure everything is colored properly in studio for the shoot. Uh, and there's a lot of really 
really cool things you can do with gels. But you know what? Sometimes we don't live in an ideal world, and it's cool to be able to go in and enhance uh, the color and really kind of add this booming effect uh, to photos. And this doesn't just work for studio photos. I, mean, I know we're working on a studio photo, but you can take this effect and apply it to all kinds of different photos. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for this one, guys. If you've enjoyed it, make sure, again, you subscribe to the channel for learning about gradient fill layers, gradients, colors, dragging colors around, a bunch of different blend modes, all kinds of things like that. For this one, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.